Christmas. Happy December. It is, well, it's well into December at this point. It's December 18th. Um, this is a very casual and conversational video. I actually just filmed a big video. Um, so in the meantime, it's going to take me a couple days to edit that. So uh, in the meantime, I just wanted to chat because my December plans have certainly gone awry. <laughs> um, but I wanted to check in, have a little chat, and we're going to wrap some Christmas presents. So get in the holiday spirit. Make yourself a cup of tea and let's chat. Okay, I am wrapping some presents for my family and these are actually from my Atlanta Indie Bookshop Crawl. These are the books that I'm giving to my family, so um, eventually I'll let you know what those are, but probably after Christmas. But I guess the first thing that I'll mention is why I didn't do a November wrap-up. Um, I did a December TBR in my winter read, so I kind of thought, well, it's okay if I don't do a true December TBR. But also what happened is that I had some thing happen very early on in the month and um, it just was very distracting. It was really hard for me to do really much of anything. It was hard for me to focus on anything. Um, and it just meant that I was not in the mood to film videos. Um, it just, it was really distracting um, and it continues to be distracting, but I'm trying to push through it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that actually happened on December 1st. So did not feel like filming a November wrap up that day. Do I know, do I know how to wrap this? Is, oh no, <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, here we go. I think I figured it out. And actually the video that I made, um, the Thanksgiving readathon, that would have been the last books in November that I read, but I did want to come on and specifically talk about My Dark Vanessa by Kate Russell because I never got to talk about that in a video. And it was one of the best books I read this year. So I really wanted to make sure that I got the opportunity to talk about it because I had just started. I was only 30 pages into it when I talked about it in my Thanksgiving readathon. And I just, well, we're going to need to talk about that. Oh man, I cut that really close. <laughs> I'm really not good at wrapping. That's actually very bad. Oh my God, this wrapping paper is like see-through. Yikes, oh well, no one's gonna be looking that close, it's fine. But anyway, in relation to what I was saying about um, just having a personal thing come up early on in December, not only have I not been able to make any videos, but I also have not been able to physically like read any books. I haven't been able to pick up any books. I haven't been able to focus or just, shut off my mind long enough to do that. Um, so my December TBR kind of went out the window anyway. Uh, but that being said, I still have some time left. I'm going to visit family for the holidays, so I might have time then. And then I have picked up a couple audiobooks. So I have had a couple audiobooks. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say that they are DNFs though, but at least one of them is. So that's kind of like, okay, we're just, we're just chatting about some recent reads and unfortunately one of them is a DNF. But uh, I can talk about the other one, which I'm 50% of the way through and do I wish <laughs> I could DNF it? I'm not going to because otherwise I haven't read a single book in December, so I'm not going to DNF it, but Ugh, it's not working for me. So I will get to both of those in a minute, but first let's talk about My Dark Vanessa. So My Dark Vanessa is a contemporary uh, literary fiction novel. Um, it was released in 2020 uh, by Kate Russell, by the way. And I had seen it kind of floating around booktube a little bit. Um, and it's subject matter. I kind of just didn't really know what to do with. It's about um, a 15 year old girl who uh, becomes involved with her professor at her high school. Um, it's, a, it's a boarding school. Um, and I'd seen it floating around booktube and I was kind of interested but not really sure. But then um, I saw a really good review of it from a clockwork reader and she was like so passionate about this book that I was like, okay, and, and, and generally I do 
align with a clockwork reader a lot um, in her reading taste so I was like okay I'll give it a try and I actually bought the book had it on my shelf for several months and I was kind of just like what what mood do you have to be like what mindset do you have to be in to read this book um, and I just eventually had to set a date for myself I was like this has been on my shelf for several months I am going to read this in November and I just told myself that it was like a non-negotiable like we have to read it so first first present down I finally picked it up in November and this book it really was just stunning it was mind-blowing I was really not sure how um, the situation was going to be handled um, but Obviously, not only does it do a really good job of just exploring the dynamics of the student-teacher relationship and how things got to the level that they were and like the grooming by the professor and just how this girl was manipulated, but I mean, that I was all expecting. But what I really was not expecting was that the crux of the tension of this novel is that Vanessa, the protagonist, the 15 year old girl, um, which we actually see like dual perspectives. We see her at 15 and then we see her older self. She's like 32 or 33. So we see like, we see the whole experience that she had. And, but really the crux of the tension of this novel comes from the fact that as a 33 year old woman, she actually is still in contact with this man and she still, she remembers the relationship fondly, I guess is what I will say, is how I'll say it. Um, and she is being asked to come forward because other people have started um, um, coming forward with their stories and she's asked, you know, can you please come forward and, and tell your story? It would really help validate these allegations and she does not want to do that because she actually like really still cares for him and that is really what jump starts the novel um and i thought that was just so unexpected but the novel does an amazing job of exemplifying how past trauma can kind of create um just a form a way of thinking especially when this happens to a 15 year old girl um and you you're so close in the perspective of Vanessa that you can really like see every you know piece of her thinking and it's just it's it's really stunning and I wasn't expecting to be that blown away by it so I guess though that I will you know mention that with the subject matter there are quite graphic depictions of um the sexual elements of their relationship and uh it's not it's not fun to read it's really difficult actually um but necessary when you're talking about a story of this nature just to understand how you know what actually happens and how it happens ah no it ripped that was going so well if you do think that you can handle the uh mature nature of the story I definitely think it's a really you know well worth it read definitely a book that I'll be thinking about for a long time and one of my top reads of 2022 2022 what what book should I talk about next um yeah December has really been not a great month uh for reading for me um and that's making it hard to make any kind of content or anything. And also, it's just I, I have been struggling with what to make a reading vlog for. Um, it's, it's just this month. It's been a bit of a mess. But that's okay. Um, the next book that I attempted to read uh, was The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. And if you have watched my TBRs from the past couple months, then you know that I've been trying to get around to this. So I feel proud of myself for attempting it. Uh, unfortunately, I think I'm going to DNF it. I have the physical copy, but I actually was listening to the audiobook because like I said, 
I could not. I just couldn't. I haven't been able to read anything this entire month physically. Um, and so the Bone Shard Daughter is a fantasy series. I think there's going to be three books. I think there's two now and there's going to be a third. But it's, it's a fantasy story um, involving a magical power called Bone Shard Magic. And the emperor of this land is the only person who has the Bone Shard Magic. And then I guess his family. Um, and he is abusing his power and he's having, um, he's caused a bit of a rebellion. Um, and so the story follows his daughter as she, um, tries to regain public opinion of the throne, I guess. Uh, by the way, I, I, I'm about, I think like 80 to 90 pages in, so almost at the 100 page mark. Um, and I guess I'm just realizing that fantasy is not really my thing. I keep trying to like it and I just keep not liking it. I was told that the, the really like interesting part of this book was the magic system, which is the bone shard magic. And I just wasn't really into it. I wasn't really into it. The bone shard magic, what it does is it basically creates, it takes bone shards of people and then it uses magic to like reanimate it into something else which is basically like a slave um but they're kind of humanoid they're like half human half animal of some kind um and then the emperor makes them into his slaves and they have like varying degrees of intelligence and all that sounds kind of interesting but <laughs> it sounds interesting in theory but i just haven't really been interested in the story i haven't cared for it much is that what you mean I haven't really cared for it much, and then also the characters. The characters are just not really my favorite. It follows a lot of perspectives, and it just, it feels like it should be interesting. And I think this is really on me. I think this is not any fault of the book. I think the book is fine. I think the writing's fine. I think everything's fine. I just, I think I have to accept that I don't like fantasy. And I keep trying to like fantasy, and I just think I just don't. <laughs> so... I might give it up. I'm not sure. Maybe George will read it and tell me if it's any good. Do you want to read The Bone Shard Daughter? Mm -hmm. Don't listen to my review of it. It's just, <laughs> George actually really likes fantasy, and so he could probably read it and say if it's actually a good fantasy. I've heard it's actually, like, a lot of people do like it. People who like fantasy have liked this series. And I just don't, for me, it's just like, it's all the same. It's like, oh, there's an empire and then there's a rebellion and there's an evil leader and there's like a ch magic chosen one. It's like, it's just all the same. I did enjoy Game of Thrones, um, but I think it's because that that's more like political intrigue with a dash of magical elements. Um, but really the characters were so strong in that series and... <sighs> I just feel like every other fantasy I've read is just kind of run-of-the-mill. So, sorry. I feel like I'll keep trying, though. I seriously have, like, a major, like, fear of missing out. If people are talking about a book, I do want to try it. But I have just not done a good job of, like, choosing books that I feel like I'll actually like. I just hear people review it, and I'm like, oh, well, they loved it. So that means that I'm going to love it, and that's, that's definitely not the case. Second book down, yay! Second gift done. Um, yeah. Speaking of books that I'm definitely not the target audience of, um, the book that I'm now listening to on audiobook is Finley Donovan is killing it. Zuko, you're in the way. You are cute though. Finley Donovan is Killing It is a, how do I describe this? It's, it's a mystery. It's a mystery, I guess. Contemporary mystery with like, but it's like kind of comedic and it's really generally lighthearted. Like there's, there's actually like still a murder. So it's however light a lighthearted murder can be, but 
But, um, yeah, it's... Ooh. Follows the character of Finley Donovan, who is um, a single mother. She's recently divorced. Her husband was cheating, and she's just in a mess of trouble. She has no money, and she's an author who writes uh, mystery thrillers. And she's struggling to complete her next book. She is overheard at a Panera talking to her agent about her next mystery novel um, involving um, a, a, a specific death. And the woman next to her, I guess, assumes that Finley is an assassin and asks Finley to kill her husband for her. <laughs> So yeah, kind of a kind of a ridiculous premise, but a lot of people have enjoyed it. And I saw it available at my library on audiobook and I was like, well this seems kind of lighthearted and I feel like I don't have to focus super hard to get the story. So I started listening to it and I'm, right now I'm just over the 50% mark. I'm 52% and uh, <sighs> I, w I wish that I was liking it more. I really do. Um, I think Finley's an interesting character. I think the writing is like decently funny. I think the idea, the premise could be really fun. But I thought that, or my understanding from what other people have said was that the humor comes from like the fact that she's not an assassin and she's just like kind of like stumbling through this job. And I thought that could be really funny. But actually that's just not very much of the plot. The plot is not super heavy on her actually doing the job it's it's actually like a lot of it is a mystery and it's involving something that happens um kind of after the deed is done uh so that just took a, a turn i wasn't really expecting and i thought it would be more funny to see her just like attempt to assassinate a man and just i don't know you know fail at it a couple times but i thought that'd be funny I know, that's a weird sense of humor, but I thought that would be more funny than what's actually going on. So, I'm 50% of the way through, and I'm not really enjoying myself. Because, again, I'm not the target audience for this. Like, these are not... I, I like literary fiction, if I haven't... As if I haven't said, like, a million times. I love literary fiction. This is not... This is very far away from literary fiction. And I wish I was liking it more. But now I'm 50% of the way through. Like, I only have a couple hours left on my audiobook. So, it seems dumb to stop it now. So... We're going to continue on. So then the only other books that I really have to talk about that I've completed um, are... I completed in November The Penultimate Peril, which is the next to last book in the series of Unfortunate Events series. And then uh, as soon as I'm done with Finley Donovan, I will read the, uh, the final book in the series, um, it's, which is called The End. And... I'm excited. I'm excited to finally be done with the series. It's been a year-long project, and I've been enjoying myself, but I also feel like it's been kind of a chore, like, just to have this, like, luckily the audiobooks are not very long, and I can kind of, I usually just listen to them on the last day of the year, um, and it only takes me a couple hours, but still, it'll be nice to just not have this, like, looming criteria over me every month. But I am excited to finish the series and then make a video just kind of thinking, you know, what are my thoughts on it? Um, how have my thoughts changed from the first time I read it? Which the first time I read it was I was literally in elementary school. So a lot has changed since then. Um, and let's see how my opinions have changed. Um, and also I might watch a couple of the adaptations. I actually, I've seen the movie a lot, but I haven't really watched. I haven't attempted to watch the Netflix series because I think I watched the first episode and I didn't like the tone. But upon rereading the series, I kind of can see what they were doing with the tone of the Netflix show. So I might give that a try and see if I can incorporate that into my series wrap-up video. Um, like I said, I, it's very nearing the end of the month, so I'll be lucky if I get a book in at all. Uh, well, I do, I do plan to finish. Uh, I'll listen to the end and then, you know, that'll count as a book. Um, but I also really hope to, I still have hope that I can read Bear Town um, in December. Uh, because I love Frederick Bachman and I trust his writing and you know, it's not gonna be like a chore. It's not gonna be work for me to, you know, 
get to know a new author. Like I know Frederick Bachman's writing style. I know he can hold my attention. And so I think um, I'll probably start reading that one um, maybe at the airport when I go to visit my family. Uh, so we have some time, we have time. And I don't know how long this like physical reading slump, well, I don't really wanna call it a reading slump because a reading slump implies that I don't wanna read. And it's not that, it's just that like I have, I'm having a hard time sitting down and like just physically reading right now. So it's not so much a reading slump, but I don't know how long this like physical reading inability <laughs> will uh, go on. But so I think what I'm gonna do is just right at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna start reading the Walking Dead um, comics, the graphic novels that I have, um, because it's my goal to read one of the four Walking Dead compendium novels per quarter. So it would be really good for me to just start like knocking that out and reading the first one. And I think that might kind of get me back into just physically reading um, because I feel like, I don't know, it's just with the pictures and the illustrations and everything. And plus I already know that story, especially the first one. I know that, I know the show stayed very close to that. So I, again, I feel like I don't have to like push my brain too much because I just can't focus right now. But um, I'm really excited actually. I'm like hyping myself up and I'm really excited to start The Walking Dead. Yay! Okay, there are three my three books that I uh, that I got for my family. They are wrapped. This is so exciting. That's one more thing off my to do list. Yay! Um, yeah, and really that that's all the updates I have right now. I just want to sit here and kind of chat for a minute because I didn't do a November wrap up or a December TBR, and I've been kind of slacking putting out some videos and really that's why just because I haven't been in the headspace to be able to do it uh, the way that I want um, but like I just said I've just finished filming the video that I've been honestly trying to put out for this entire year so or like I guess the second half of the year but um, so that's exciting um, anyway I have more presents to wrap so I'm gonna go but thanks for hanging out and chatting with me and I will see you next time. Bye.